you and me again, buddy. Why don't you sit there in case there's trouble. Okay, so, oh, thank you for coming out. Today, we're talking about something that rhymes with boy. Joy. You said it, joy. Rhymes with boy. Joy, toy, toy. So, joy is, joy is like happiness, only it's bigger and better and bolder. Okay, I'll show you a little example. One moment. Got some props in here. Hold on. I'm missing somebody. Oh, no. What happened? Oh, shucks. All right. This balloon had a face on it, so we'll have to pretend. Just hold on a sec. All right, this balloon is happiness. Remember, joy is a little bigger than happiness. Oh, happiness. Happiness. This balloon is happiness. This balloon, it's the weekend. It has no homework. It's somebody's making happiness's favorite dinner tonight. It's very happy. Okay, but there are some bad things in life that happen, right? Somebody spills, somebody spills milk on you. Plug your ears. Somebody spills milk on you, or you forgot your lunch again. Here goes. So this is the bad thing that happens when you're sometimes you're happy. <sighs> oh! Now do you louder, louder than expected. Yeah, right. Did you see how 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 easily that happiness was shattered? Sorry about that. All right. Remember I said joy is a little better than happiness? Here's my happy face. Joy. Joy. What's exciting is? Water this is joy. Watch what happens. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three. It's not happening. Because joy is, is bigger than happiness. Yeah, it, because it has, it it's in your heart. So the bad things will still happen to someone who has joy, but they'll be more resilient. Resilient's a big word. It means, basically means bouncy. You'll bounce back a little easier. It's a little easier to handle the bad stuff when you're full of joy. And the joy comes from, I don't want you lighting yourselves on fire at home, okay? There's a little water in this balloon. The water represents the power of God's spirit, power of the Holy Spirit. So it keeps, it keeps the balloon joyful, all right? Don't try that at home, okay? But if you pop, but if you do it up, Did you see how it held up longer than the happiness balloon, though? Yeah. All right. So that brings us to today's Bible verse, which I like to call the Linus yep. Monologue. You guys don't know about it, but these guys do. And I need a little reminder. And the angel said unto them, I bring you good, do not be afraid, first, the angel said. I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Now, let's talk about this for a minute. The angel came. Do you, have you ever been left out of something? Do you ever feel left out? Somebody, you want some help from somebody, and they say, no, I'm too busy. Yeah. Or it happens, yeah, right? Sometimes. You, you, you want to know what those guys are talking about, and they say, oh, we'll tell you later. It's not important. It makes you kind of feel left out. Well, there's a group of people in the Bible who were sometimes left out. It's the shepherds. The shepherds were hardly ever in town. They didn't get to go to the parties. They didn't get to talk to the townspeople because they were out in the fields working, right, with their flocks, their sheep. So who does the angel of the Lord appear to first? The shepherds, right. And, 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 and the reason for that is because the, what, the angel wanted everyone to know about Jesus' birth, but the angel also wanted to make sure that everyone knew that what Jesus meant as a baby and what Jesus was going to share when he got older, when he grew up, was going to be for everyone to hear. Everyone, not just certain people, okay? So in review, by first telling the shepherds about Jesus' birth, a very clear message was sent that Christ, Jesus Christ was going to share his, the good news of the birth and then the good news that Jesus was going to share through his whole lifetime was for not just for the shepherds but for you and me and all of us all right let's have a prayer
Now this time we're going to go back to the old style, which is you repeat after me, okay? It's easy. Dear God, Dear God thank you for the power, thank you for the power of, joy, of joy, which comes from, which comes from the love of Jesus, for, love of Jesus for, all people. for all people. Happiness is good. Happiness is good. But joy is better. But joy is better. Amen. Amen. Good job. Now I invite you to enjoy the ghost of Christmas chant. promised yourself and your family that this Advent season would be different. No more rushing around like you lost your mind. No more doing everything and anything, ending up exhausted on Christmas Eve. So who cares if the church needs another wise man for the church play? Who cares if the choir is one bass short? It's not my problem. We've been invited to 80 parties this year. It's not, it's, it's just not. It is my problem. <laughs> I have to be there for everyone. <laughs> I can't let anyone down. <sighs> I pledge to burn out for the Lord this year. <laughs> I... Look, Lucy. You can't schedule these things so close together. I'm only one Christmas ghost. Come on, you're killing me here. That is, if I could be killed. Anyway, no. I'm here now. I'll text you when I'm done. Um. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay, it looks uh, like... Let's get this over with, Mr. Needlebum. Uh, it says here you hate humanity, that you're mean to your workers, you could care less about charity, you don't like puppies, and you pull the wings off flies. <laughs> blah, 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 on and on. Needlebum. I'm Evans, Bill Evans. Evans, wait, you're not scheduled until a week from Tuesday. Lucy. Can I help you? Look, pal, no one can help me with this killer schedule. Back in the day, this visiting people who had their priorities out of whack was fun. We had plenty of help. We were redeeming people left and right. Bam, bam, bam. Now, because of all the downsizing, I'm it. <laughs> no more ghost of Christmas past, present, and future. Just one ghost, me. Doing it all. And trust me, I'm a ghost on the edge. <laughs> that is scary. Tell me about it. Okay, okay. Well, since... I'm here. Uh, I might as well get you taken care of right away. Look, instead of me flying you through 50 time zones, let's do this PowerPoint presentation and I'll be on my way. Uh, power, what's going on? Not up on modern technology. Great. Look, you were just complaining about being too busy 
and having too many things to do, etc., etc., etc. Yeah, but uh... bam, behavioral and attitude modification, my friend. That's what I do. Um, ever heard of Scrooge, the Christmas Carol? Tiny Bob or Tiny Tony or what's his name, that kid, you know? <laughs> Hello? Uh, Tim. <laughs> no, I'm Mildred. <laughs> and you're just, eh, take a wild guess. Oh, really? I'm supposed to be Ebenezer. Bingo, give that man a cookie soon anyway. Just set back. I have handouts and slides somewhere, and we'll knock this thing out. Wait a minute. I don't care if this is supposed to be some sort of low-budget Christmas carol. I still want the works. You know, touch your robe and we go flying through the clouds. <laughs> You're killing me here, Tim. Phil. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. You really want the works, fine. Let's dance. Come thou mortal, touch thy robe, or sweater, <laughs> and be ye transformed more than this. Sweet. I can't see anything. Oh, right. <laughs> Ow. Okay. Wow, that helped. Hey, this is where I grew up. That old house on Elm Street. There's that big wheel I love so much. And there's the whole family at dinner. I remember this. But where's my dad? late again. Hey, you want to quit texting for just two minutes? Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so where were we? Mm. Magical, huh? I remember this night, Christmas Eve. Dad was juggling ten things at once, like always. He always meant well, you know. Of course. Always well-intentioned. Hey, he was a talented guy. He was just using the gifts he was given. <laughs> yeah, looks like he was given other gifts, too. Like all of you sitting in the dining room table waiting for him, waiting to share your special Christmas dinner. And he was a no-show, wasn't he? Well, he? He had his reasons. Of course, always. But look at your faces. No one seems to buy it. I just wanted him there, all of us together, all at one time. All of us together with the Christmas story and the manger scene displayed prominently. Dad would always read us the Bible story. But as the years went by, it became less and less important. Okay, that's enough. Grab the sweater again. Two more stops. Okay, okay. If I remember my Dickens story right, we are in present day. Yeah, there's my family. Oh, doesn't that look Christmassy? Uh, no. The wife and I had a little intense fellowship about me attending one of the kids' dramas. Or was it a music? I don't remember. I had this major client that I had to meet in Chicago. They were here from China. Only, one, only here for a day or two. I also didn't realize my kids were hearing all our conversation. Ouch. Yeah, peaceful. The manger scene isn't a major player here, is it? I think it's off in the corner. 
Oh, and look, I see your family Bible is there on the bookshelf. Lots of dust. It hasn't been open for some time now. My wife just doesn't understand how important that presentation is. I can't just ditch my clients for a simple Christmas pageant or just to read my kids some Bible story. Right. Okay, Phil, next stop. You know the drill. Wait, you don't understand. I don't need to understand. Well, this is strange. It uh, looks like my house, but it seems so different. Something's missing. What am I looking at? Mildred? Oh, fine, I get it. You're really burying yourself in the part, aren't you? Okay, I'll play along. Weird. It's Christmas Eve. There should be family around, laughing, jumping around. Wait, where am I now? Whose apartment is this? I shouldn't be here. Wait, there's my, my coat. It's pretty beat up now. My old chair. My briefcase. Where's my kids? My wife. Okay, Mildred. Where are you hiding them? Smack my head again so I can see them. Come on, lady. Show me some mercy. This can't be the way it's going to be. I love my family. I need to do anything to... Tell me, tell me, please, it's not too late. Please tell me I didn't give up everything for nothing. Please come back into my life. Tell me it's not too late. Tell me. Oh. Oh. Where, where am I? Wow, that was intense. Better check the date on that eggnog I drank. <laughs> <sighs> Had to have been a dream. Then again, wait, the apartment. I remember. There's, no, wait, I'm here. Now, it's real, and it's not too late. Liz. Kids, yeah, I'm here. Huh? Oh, yeah, guess I am outside. Coming. And throw out that eggnog. <laughs> you know, sometimes this job isn't all bad. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Our second reading is from Luke, chapter 2, verses 15 to 20. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. 
So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they, were, they made known what had been told them about the child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered on them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The words of the go The words of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Amen. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Today, the, the sermon title is Accepting Christ's Invitation. <laughs> that is a big one. Mm -hmm. That is not one that you take lightly. And that's one that is... Um, Definitely personal. So I want to kind of go back. Kind of do 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 do. Kind of go back to all the scriptures that we read where the angels came and spoke to our characters in the scriptures and said, Do not be afraid. Because when you take a step that momentous in your life, even though you're doing something that you shouldn't be afraid, there is fear and there is trepidation. Even though you're moving towards what Mary and Riley talked about as joy, where it's greater than happiness and it can carry you through the hard times so much better than happiness is, which is fleeting, and joy is greater. When you accept something that fundamentally changes who you are, not only to yourself, but how others perceive you in the world, and that is when you accept that I am a Christian and I accept Christ into my life. And when people say, what does that mean to you? And you say, I accept Christ as my Lord and Savior. And they say, yeah, and then what does that mean? And then you have to actually explain that. <clears throat> That's a tough one. And then they do things like, so if you believe that there is a God, why? Do kids still get sick? Well, that's a tough one, isn't it? And if you believe that there's a loving God, why did my uncle, who never did a bad thing in his life, die? Well, I wish I knew that. I'd love to be able to answer that. Because then I would answer why my father, who I absolutely adored, died. that would answer why there's still evil in the world when there's a loving God. Mm. Isn't that the hard one when you're accepting Christ into your life? You want to say, if there's a God in this world, why? Why is there still evil in this world? It doesn't make sense make sense if I'm accepting Christ into my life, shouldn't I say, if I accept Christ in my life, all evil, all bad things, everything per perfect now will happen in my life. All pain in my life disappears. All negativity in my life goes away. The world becomes a shiny no globe where nothing negative will ever affect me again. It will be perfect at all times because God will keep me in this 
perfect bubble of peace and calm and beauty at all times. But then that means I don't have any free will. And that means I'm kept in this perfect calm bubble at all times. I wish I had the answer. What we hope is by giving our lives to Christ that we become part of God's army. That sounds really militaristic, doesn't it? But we say that we're going to become part of God's army and we are going to change the evil in the world and we're going to work to flip the script in the world for good. That we are literally working in the world for good. That we're out there making sure that we make choices that counteract the negative in the world. That we make choices that help those that are hungry, that help those that are needy, that help those that make the negative. We work in the world to do what God called us to do. That if God calls us to go out into the world to bring his kingdom into the world, that we are on the front lines to do that. That we are God's army for justice and love and joy and peace and hope in this world. And you know how I know that? Because when we are called in this world, God gives us his gifts to do it. They're not superhero strengths, but they are strengths. We have strengths of love. We have strengths of peace. We have strengths of hope. We have strengths that carry us through. Now, how does this work? This works because the first two people that became Christians were not in a church. It's kind of weird to think about that, isn't it? We always think that people become Christians in a church, that Christians become Christians. But think about it. Who are the first two people that became Christians? Thank you, Mary and Joseph. Those were the first two people that became Christians. The angel came to Mary and Joseph and they said, do not be afraid. Follow this little baby. And he's going to show you the world. Mary, Mary followed Jesus her entire life. First, she made sure that he could do his ministry. She set him up. She educated him. She made sure he became the man he was. To the point that when he was like, I don't think I'm ready to do, to, to do miracles and stuff, Mama. I don't think I'm ready. She's like, yes, you are. Boom. You start making wine at that wedding. You are good. Get out there, boy. And she pushed him to get going. And then she followed him to the foot of the cross. And she stayed there. One of the few who stayed there. Until his body was ready to be taken off. And then she helped bring him to the tomb. And then she was there when the tomb was opened and he was resurrected. And then she was one of the first to start his movement when it was called the New Way. The 
mother of Christ, the mother of Christ, was one of the first evangelists of his movement. Think of that, how powerful that was. His father made sure that he grew up by making sure that he got to Egypt and protected him and then brought him back into the, his home country to make sure that he was in position, ready to be the man he was as the Messiah. He set him up. His cousins and his family were his first followers. That's so cool. His cousins and his families were his first followers. Now we also read in, his, in the Bible that his cousins and his family were his first detractors. It gets hard sometimes when you're a believer. Those that you want to support you sometimes can be the ones that push against you the hardest. Your friends and your families are like, don't listen to that. God, that's so 19th century. Come on, you know better than that. You don't have to listen to that stuff. You know, it's all in your head, the bright light. There's no real stuff. It's just you and the universe. I don't know what they think the universe is. It's God. When you accept Christ into your life, God never said it was going to be easy. God doesn't say it's going to be easy by sending angels that the first thing out of their mouth says, do not be afraid. Anybody that says that, basically the message is, be very afraid. <laughs> because your life is about to change. You're about to care about things that maybe you wouldn't care about otherwise. Basically, things that have more to do with other people, other situations than you. You might care about the world. You might care about the environment. You might care about other people across the world from you that you've never heard about before. And you might cry. You might care about Christ. You might care about God. You might care about those that have gone on before you and feel it so deeply that there are times that your heart literally feels like it's torn in two because you have not come as far as you want to go. And then there are times that you feel so much joy because other people are happy. And then those naysayers will say, that's not your happiness. Why are you happy? That's not your happiness. And that's where Marion's joy comes in. Because joy is like a balloon and it fills with the joy of others and you get to be part of that. Because once you accept Christ and you're part of the Holy Spirit, you are part of that, and that fills you up. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, it fills you. It imbues you with that power. And there are some times that you can literally just feel it buzz through you. That power of God just fills and that's what our goal is in this world, is to fill the world with that positive power. It's so easy, so easy to be devastated by the negative. It's so easy to watch the news and to get tricked by the way the news has 
that if it bleeds, it leads. And to never see any good stories. Because, you know, why would you want to do that? That's not ratings gold. Seeing people love each other, seeing people support each other, seeing people come out and be together, that's not ratings gold. Wars, devastation, destruction. That's ratings gold. Seeing people come together and be happy? Well, that's boring. But what if we made that popular? That, that's actually the kingdom. I've seen that happen. I've seen actually Christians and Muslims and Jews get together in a parking lot and talk and celebrate and just be joyful with each other and fill our balloon of joy. Why? Because we all celebrate the same God and we were there doing so. This world is made for God. I gave my life to Christ. They were celebrating giving their life to God. The Jewish people were also celebrating giving their life to God. And we celebrated that we all gave our life to a higher power that we all celebrated came from Father Abraham. And that we could all be there together as one united group. And then we did this. Where are the cameras? Because they weren't there. You know when the cameras came? They saw a crowd of people milling around in the parking lot, and they thought we were storming the mosque. So somebody called the police. And the police came, lights and sirens, flying in. The cameras came because they got the police call that lights and sirens were flying into the mosque because the mosque was under attack. And there was a crowd of people in the parking lot. And we were all there because we were all in celebration mode as we stood there. And then the cops came and they were like, what are you doing? And we said, we are celebrating. And then the cops all left. And then the news people came and they said, why are you here? And we said, we're all celebrating. And they all left. Not one picture. But do you know what there was? There was a lot of partying afterwards. God loves us. You know how I know that? God sent us Jesus Christ in this world. And he loves us so much that he lived for us. And he taught us. Eventually, he died for us. And then he was resurrected for us. And because he was resurrected, we will live eternally. And I will know all of you, everyone in this room, eternally. Because of his sacrifice, because of God's love, why I know God loves us. That is why I gave my heart to God. If you have not given your heart to Christ, I ask you to do so. On January 15th, we'll have our remembrance of baptism, and we will celebrate that. If you haven't been baptized, I invite you to be baptized that day. If you have been baptized, we're going to celebrate with getting a little wet. Today, we celebrate accepting Christ's invitation. Amen. Please stand and join in the hymn of response, Good Christian Friends Rejoice, verses 2 and 3.
I'd like prayers. I'd like prayers for Mark Way. He's been in the hospital in Naperville since Tuesday, uh, very sick with a bad infection. And actually, I'm going to read a text that his wife Holly just sent me after I got here this morning. He had surgery Friday night to flush out infection in his knee and calf. They placed a pump and drain tube, and after clear of infection, they'll place a pick line for long-term IV antibiotics. Mm. So he was much better yesterday, but um, he was really sick. Wow. Thank you for sharing. So let's lift up prayers for Mark Way as um, he battles his infection. And we ask for his recovery and for his health and for his strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I just like prayers for um, Dave is going to have tests tomorrow, uh, stress tests and echocardiogram, and just for a good outcome. Lord, 
Lord, we lift up David, who is just fine, but he is still having um, deep set, um, heart tests. And that um, you be with him as he's going through all of these tests, and that you be with Lori as she's in the waiting room waiting um, for all of these tests. It can be just as stressful for the partner waiting for the results as well. We lift up um, these prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I just wanted to give an update on my brother, Philip. I saw him yesterday. I brought him a book that he's been wanting. Um, he went out and bought a paint-by-number set, and it's just not your average paint-by-number. It's like a French painting of some kind, but he's going to try it, even though his hands aren't working. He's back in therapy. They had him standing up using the suspended from the ceiling thing, but he was able to walk without a walker or a cane, but... He really needs the cane, and he still has to wear braces. So his feet still are not working. If we could pray some more for Philip to get feeling back in his lower legs, that would be great. Uh, but he continues to improve. It's been since September of 21, so it's been, I don't know, 15 months since he was stricken. Lord, specifically, we're going to lift up prayers for... Um, Philip to get um, feeling back in his lower limbs. We've been praying for Philip, and we've been um, praying for general healing. Now we're praying for specifically that um, he gets the feeling back in his lower limbs and the strength back in his lower limbs, and that he just starts to feel something back there. We thank you for how well he's doing and that he's just really persevering and we thank you lord for all the help that you've given him and all of the the medical teams that are working with him and we continue to pray that he continues to feel improvement each day and lord in your mercy hear our prayers lord we thank you for all that you have blessed us with we pray for those that we have heard their prayers lifted up. We pray for those that have long-term illnesses that have not been lifted up today, those that have been battling them, those that continue to battle illnesses that do so quietly, those that are waiting for diagnoses, those that have family members. We pray for those that are grieving, continue to grieve long term. We pray for all of your children, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we lift up prayers knowing that we come to you as your children and we pray for those that can reach out to you, knowing that you reach out to us first and that is the joy We have this image of you in that famous painting where you knock on the door. And that is you reaching out to us, knocking on our lives, saying, come to me. That you are reaching for us, always calling to us, saying that you want us. Many times it's hard for us to understand how much you want us. That in a world filled with fear, in a world filled with being invisible many times, you see us, you hear us, you reach to us. We are never too sinful, never too invisible, never too not enough. We are your children. We are wanted. We are loved. We are what you think is needed to make this world the best world. We thank you, Lord, for that invitation. We ask you to help us to use the gifts that you have given us to truly make your kingdom here on earth. We lift up all of these prayers to you as we say the prayer that Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Will the ushers please come forward? back to you. We ask you to bless it and to use it to make our world better and to bring your kingdom. We ask you to bless a portion and to use it in our congregation, in our community, and in our world. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Please remain standing for our closing hymn, Joy to the World, verses 1 and 2. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.